Hey gang, welcome back to Creep Designs, I am Twitch. So today we are talking all things staging walls. This is my current staging wall. So this is literally just some cheap plastic shower curtains from Kmart that I hung up as a temporary staging wall whilst I set up my new workshop. So in my previous workshop, which was under our house and had very little headspace, uh, this was my previous staging wall which was made of timber pieces that were ripped out of the house next door during renovations. Um, it was rough as guts, but it was my staging wall for ages and I was very proud of it. As you can see, I have staged a lot of pieces in front of it. Don't realize just how many different styles I've done until you see it like this. So the first thing I needed to do was get all of this stuff out of the way and give the area a good clean. I was being careful about taking down the shower curtains because a few tarantulas had crawled out from behind it so I didn't want that on me. So this entire corner was going to be done kind of like a cheapish version of wainscoting but my mum had a sheet of this VJ board panel left over from her renovations so I chop some height off of it and decided to use it for the shorter side of my corner. It really doesn't look like it would be but this stuff was bloody heavy. So as you know we recently had some flooding here in Ipswich and luckily the shed, the only water that the shed really saw was some water that ran down the sides of the walls and some about maybe two centimeters of water in the corner right where I'm putting the staging wall. So what I'm doing is using some blocks of pine to chock it up about two or three centimeters off the actual floor. Um, the skirting boards will be covering it and the way I figure it is uh, the skirting boards, if they get damaged at any point, I can rip those off and replace those easily compared to, as opposed to replacing the entire walls because the bottom of the walls get soggy and go all bubbly or warped. So my phone decided to stop recording whilst I was doing all of this, but what I've done here instead of framing up the wall is use liquid nails to attach it to the frame of the shed. If I need to at any point I can just rip the whole thing off um, but I just liquid nailed it on and then used clamps to hold it all in place while it dried. Alright so I'm going to level with you here. I did some really dodgy framework on this because of the weird shapes and because um, with the vertical parts of the framing of the shed there's parts where the pine sits inside it and it kind of helps hold it inside the wall whereas there's other parts where there's nothing to hold it in and if I didn't attach it with liquid nails it would just fall out of the wall. Some of you will probably know what I'm talking about but here is the bottom part of the wall all framed in and I ran out of pine studs so I had to use the pieces that I'd previously used to something else that were off a fence, they were fence palings. I have smaller sheets on the bottom and larger sheets on the top and you'll see why shortly. But most of this is held together with liquid nails and staples. They are my go-to these days because they are simple. So now I'm just adding some skirting boards that are left over from renovations as well. And I'm just going to miter the corners and then I'll trim the excess off the other end. Now that that's done, I am ready to add some strips to the MDF sheets. I'm cutting my strips from 9mm MDF sheets, but you could also just use timber. I was trying to keep this on the cheap. So 
So it was at this point that I realized that if I use these thicker strips on the bottom part of the paneling to go up against the top of the skirting boards, they'd be too thick and they would overhang. So I swapped over to the six millimeter sheet and cut those strips for the bottom and the top vertical strips. And I will still use the nine millimeter strips, but I use those for the horizontal piece that goes all along the length of that wall. So now that I've got all of those strips on, um, I'm using this corner piece that is called Quad Core. Uh, you can get this from Bunnings, I'll put a link in the description for it if you're not sure what it is, but it's the thing you, kind of thing you could use. Anyway, I digress. So I'm doing this in two sections, so I'll measure for the bottom piece first, cut it there, and then there'll be a gap in it and the top piece will sit on top of that horizontal strip. Alright, so massive oversight on my part. I knew I wanted to put strips up on this top part to cover the joins. But the joins are not really in places where it would make sense for the strips to be up the top by themselves. So you see this one's in the middle of this panel and this one's kind of lined up with this piece down the bottom but it's also not. And then this one is kind of off to the side of this end panel. Um, and then I was like okay so I'll put them on those parts but then I'll also put them so they line up with this so then I'm like but hang on then there'll be weird random gaps so I've lined up the ones on the floor that line up with the top gaps so these ones here that one and then I've also put laid down strips where they line up with the bottom strips there like so and there and then I've got these extra strips and I'm going to place one kind of in the middle there there and there so I'm basically filling the gaps and I think that will work out So I'm finally at the point where I can start painting this wall. Uh, first thing I did was gap filled everything. Um, it's amazing what you can hide with some gap filler. Uh, I did want to film more of the process of painting, but I mean, who wants to sit here and watch me paint a wall white? So basically what I did is I went around and gap filled everything like I already said. Then I went around and cut in with primer. And then I primed the whole thing with a roller and then once I had a decent covering of primer on everything 
I then went in with uh, my custom mix of wall paint from Bunnings with a roller. Um, it started off with what I thought was going to be an off-white colour but once I got it home and started rolling it on top of the primer it just didn't look right. It looked really peachy and not at all what I wanted. So I ended up mixing some primer in with it to white it down a bit and then added a little bit of deep waters uh, to kind of neutralize the orange in it. I know that's not the right word but you know what I mean. It cancels it out, it cancels the orange. So it gave me more of that softer warm tone that I wanted. So this is the primer going on. And this is the colour that was supposed to be like an off-white, a warm off-white. And it came up super, super peachy up against the white. And because my skirting boards are going to be vivid white, I didn't want it to be coming through as that peachy. So this is what the colour I got from Bunnings looked like. And this is before I toned it down and added the blue to it to cancel out the orange in it. Oh, here it is guys. I would have shown a lot more of the process but I needed to get it done because I've got so many jobs on the go. But here is like I'm kind of just showing you what I've done for my staging wall just in case anyone else is lost for ideas of what to do for their staging wall. But you know Except for the VJ board, which was left over from my mum's renovations, um, I purchased all the other stuff. The skirting boards I also had left over from the renovation as well. Um, but I brought all the MDF for this and some of the pine studs that are in the walls. Um, and all up, I spent $154 on all of those parts and I didn't use all of it. I've got leftover pieces here and there but those will not go to waste I'll use them in other projects so I'll show you the skirting board the skirting board is vivid white so you can see there the difference between that and the wall color so it is still very warm but it's not as warm as like a horrible you know apricot color uh, yeah so it's not perfect there's little bits and pieces of stuff like the gap filler that I use was the wrong gap filler but I was using what we had on hand um, it was very rubbery because it was a flexible gap filler but yeah I'm very happy with that so I'm going to be just dealing with living with the concrete floor for now because I can't afford to spend any more money on this at the moment um, so I'll just use rugs and stuff to kind of disguise the concrete a bit um, but eventually I'm going to get some um, linoleum flooring. I'm going for that so that if uh, there's any bad weather or anything like that, because this is my mum's garage. So if there's any bad weather or anything like that, I can move all of my stuff over to that side of the shed and then she can park her car here and that way she can drive onto the lino instead of there being a raised floor in the way. And that way I can also roll my pieces onto the staging floor instead of having to get someone here to help me lift it and move it in place. Uh, what would I do differently? If I was to do anything differently, I would spend the extra money and get more sheets of the VJ panel and do VJ panel along the whole wall uh, because as much as I love the look of the panelling on the other side, it was pain in the butt and took a lot longer than what I wanted to spend doing this. Whereas if I'd done the VJ panelling all around, I could have just liquid nails it, liquid nails it, use liquid nails to attach it around the whole thing. So if you're going to do this, do yourself a favour and just buy VJ panel walls. I think they're, I think these ones are $80 a piece. So I could have brought two more sheets of that and probably done this full thing just with the VJ boards and it would have been so much easier and a lot less time consuming. 
but here she is. The staging wall that I've been wanting for ages. And it's so much better than a shower curtain. I hope this video helps someone with their staging situation. And thank you so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Otherwise you will miss out on things like the spring fling challenge that is happening tomorrow. This challenge is going to be hosted by Sabrina from Sabs Rehabs. It is happening on the 26th for those in the States and the 27th for us in Australia. So again, make sure you subscribe. Otherwise you will miss out on gems like this. See you tomorrow.